What's up guys, c 13 here, and in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the Slim Armor Pro for the Galaxy Z Fold 4. All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Spigen Slim Armor Pro for the Z Fold 4. And as you can see, here it is on my phone. Now I skipped the unboxing on this particular case because, well, I needed some sort of protection for my phone. And to be honest, the unboxings get a little tiring, I know, and I'd rather just give you my pros and cons. Now, granted, I can't speak on the durability yet, so I'll just say this is an early review, but given that I've had a few days now to really get a feel for this case, I feel that I can at least tell you guys about the pros and cons of it and the good features and the bad features. And I'll also draw some parallels with the Z Fold 3 model to sort of demonstrate how the design might have changed a bit. And unfortunately, I already threw away the broken pieces of my Z Fold 3 Slim Armor Pro. So we're gonna just have to rely on on-screen graphics and pictures that I'll put in to show you guys what exactly I'm talking about. So here's my Z Fold 3 next to my Z Fold 4. And the effect of the wider cover display on the 4 is gonna be enhanced or augmented by the fact that the case makes the phone thicker. But regardless, that's not what we're here for. This isn't a comparison video between the two phones. We're just talking about this particular case. So when you first get it out of the box, it's pretty standard. This is on the inside between the two halves. and. This time they did modify it, so if you click the card above, you'll see the video I did on how you need to be careful on the Z Fold 3 because, that, because cases with adhesive can cause the millimeter wave antenna cover on the right hand, upper right hand side of the Z Fold 3 to start lifting and peeling because the adhesive will quite literally pull on that plastic cover, which is just adhesed on there. So. In that video, the damage that I got was from removing these, the Slim Armor Pro for the Z Fold 3. And I guess they were listening because on the Slim Armor Pro for the Z Fold 4, the bottom half of the case contains no adhesive around the border. So you'll see here there are separate strips in here. This is an extra set of adhesive, but all of this adhesive applies to the cover half of the case not the back half. So that's a really good improvement first off because there's gonna be no risk of damaging that millimeter wave antenna cover. And the only thing I can think of is maybe it might tug on your SIM tray a little bit, but I doubt that's gonna be a problem. And the rest of the adhesive just goes around the bottom, the sides, uh, up here, and then to the left of the display. Now obviously the border and the hinge on the Z Fold 4 is much smaller, so there's a little bit less for it to grab onto, but nonetheless, that's what this long, thin strip of adhesive is for. That bonds the cover half of the case on this side of the display. So overall, what's the build quality like? Well, the build quality is pretty good. It's the same sort of material. It's got some sort of butylene overlay, overlaying, soft touch material, um, you know, long-term, you know, in, in um, cordless power tools and that sort of thing. You do see this kind of material start to degrade and turn all gummy and stuff, but on a phone case, I think it's just fine. They did make these much more square to match the design of the phone. If you look at the images I'm gonna put on right now, if you look at these pictures of the Z Fold 3 Slim Armor Pro, you'll see that the borders and the edges of the case were much more rounded to sort of reflect the more rounded sides of the Z Fold 3. Now, in terms of overall protection, you can see that despite the fact that the camera bump on the Fold 4 is much higher and more pronounced, so too is the protection lip around the camera bump on the Slim Armor Pro for the Fold 4. And so you can see there is indeed protection. Now it's not a lot, so you can see here the depth of protection is not a lot. So if you were to drop this on like really rough concrete or something, chances are one of those lenses is still getting cracked. So there is a reason it's called the Slim Armor Pro, not the 
Tough Armor Pro, which is their other case. Although that one I probably wouldn't recommend just because it's way too thick for most people. It does limit edge use of the display and you know you just run into issues with it. So th that's basically my experience so far with the case. I haven't had any problems with it. It's been pretty good. It's been very good protection. Now obviously you can see it still does allow for some dust to get in there. It's not fully enclosed, but that's okay with me because when you open up the display, that means that everything looks flush, as you can see. Now the case does have a slight drop in height on this side, but my phone is all the way open. And you can see it looks straight. It would look a little weird if the sections here were raised to sort of meet each other better. But you know, that's something to keep in mind. It's not gonna protect your inner display from dust. Okay. Now, what did they change? We already talked about how this camera bump is a little higher, the edges are a little more square, and uh, you know, obviously the hinge section is much thinner. That, that's all given because the design of the phone changed slightly. But the one important difference, and I'd argue is a huge design mistake, is they changed the direction that the hinge opens. So on the previous model, the hinge cover would open, like let's say the phone is this way, right? The hinge cover would open towards the back. On this one, it opens towards the front. Now you might ask me, what difference does that make? Because when you open the phone, who cares what direction the hinge cover opens in? You're not looking at it, right? Well, they seem to have forgotten one of my favorite features of the Z Fold series and certainly one that while I don't use often, when I use it, it is extremely useful. And that of course is the ability to use the cover display to take selfies using the main cameras. So if we go ahead and open up the camera app and we hit this button right here, cover screen preview, you can now see that's my face and I'm standing behind the camera right now, which is actually my Note 9. You'll also notice part of the screen is covered by this hinge cover. Yeah, that doesn't happen on the old model because in the old model, the hinge cover is on this side of the case. On this model, it's covering part of the screen, which makes framing up your shots using this amazing feature way more difficult than it needs to be. Because now not only do you have to remember to look here instead of the screen, which most people do, because they don't realize that the screen isn't where the camera is. You also have to try and frame up the shot while estimating where in the actual shot it gets cut off because you can't see the edge of the screen. So obviously, you know, to me, this is a downside because it doesn't even add anything in terms of usability. So for example, if we lay this on a flat surface, the phone is still gonna wobble while it's in the case open. That's just physics. With that hinge protector in the way, it is gonna cause a fulcrum point that is gonna cause your phone to wobble. This doesn't change anything from the old version. And so to me, right, again, I'm not a production engineer, so maybe there is a cost savings reason they did this instead of the other way that I don't know about. But from my point of view, there is zero reason to do it this way. And the only thing that happens is it makes the end user experience a lot worse if you ever use that feature. But even if you're saying to yourself right now, but I never take pictures of myself, I would never do something so cringe inducing. Uh, that's great, good sir. But I gotta add, there are other reasons to use that feature. So let's just say you're taking pictures of other people and you wanna make sure that they can see that they're in frame. Well, again, that's another reason why the cover screen preview is so nice because it lets them see what you can see. So you can see and they can see. So you can see on the front and they can see on the back if they're in frame. And if they're not, instead of you having to ask them 10 times to move over just a little bit more, they can just see, oh, I'm not in the picture, I should move over. And there you go. But instead, they're gonna be like, I don't know if I'm in the picture or not because part of the screen is covered. So that is the big downside. But overall, you know, if you want a protective case that still maintains some semblance of lightness and sleekness, you know, that's obviously not something you're gonna find in the Unicorn Beetle Pro case, you know, stay tuned for that video. But this 
case will fit the bill. But just know that if, if you ever use that cover screen preview function, you might be a little disappointed by the change they made. So anyway, guys, if after all of this, you're still interested in this case, and by, by no means am I saying it's a bad case. In fact, you know, I might continue to use this case for a while until my Unicorn Beetle Pro arrives. Definitely feel free to check out the link in the description. As always, I always leave the link in the description so you can check it out. If, and if you end up purchasing this case or anything else through that link, you'd be supporting the channel and I'd really, really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you a dime extra. Just by using my link, you'll be, you'll be supporting the channel. So I appreciate it. And if you got any questions, comments, or your own experiences with the Slim Armor Pro, as always, leave that in the comments below. You know, I know me and everyone else who's a Z Fold 4 owner would love to hear what you have to say. And as always, if you wanna see more, don't forget to get subscribed.